Millie? I swear it wasn't me who christened you that. Well, I always thought the Genghis Khan was a nice man anyway. <laughs> yes, tough, but kind. No, Millie, I just thought you could help us run this place properly. If you'd be so kind, please. Thanks a lot, Millie. No, no, no haggling, I promise. Right, well, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Helen? Mm-hmm. You asleep? Well, you should be. Baby books are the most boring thing ever. You should know, darling. You've read everyone from cover to cover. Who are you phoning? Arthur. Then he'll be very offended. You kept calling him Millie. <laughs> it's his bad ear. Millie had to play go-between. Wouldn't it be difficult if Arthur had an affair with someone? Millie would have to take all the messages. <laughs> no sense, no feeling. No, stop playing with my feet and tell me what you're up to. I have just employed my first person, Millie Poole. Well, I'm damned. No, not all these years and not once did I suspect she was a bricklayer. <laughs> <laughs> to help in the house. And yet, as I was talking to her, I had the distinct impression that she was employing me. <laughs> You do like her, don't you? Like her? Love her, old bat. <laughs> How am I going to run your business? Our business. You do it. You make mistakes, you rabbit your way out of them later. And if that doesn't work, you shout. And if that doesn't work, you send for me and I shout. <laughs> <laughs> Will you come back to the office when he's born? Better still, I'll bring him with me. Nothing like an early start. At 19 weeks, movement can be felt by the mother. Nice as your feet are, I still prefer the other end of you. <laughs> oh, who the hell is that? Oh, it'll be Richard. Lovely. Richard who? Ballantyne. He threatened to come round, measure your blood pressure. Hasn't he got a surgery of his own to go to? Oh, poor devil, hasn't even got a house. Uh, Peter. Before he comes in and starts barging his way around the English language, remember this. If he can run a clinic of human beings without killing them, you can run a small business. <laughs> but you like him. He's nice, isn't he? Did I say he was nasty? And why do I have to like everyone tonight? He's not exactly Captain Courageous, is he? He hasn't even got the nerve to ring the bell twice. <laughs> <laughs> the same bell twice. A bell at the back door. This is true affluence. <laughs> right, where is she? I have things to say. Through here? Uh, that's right. Mrs. Morgan. Are we alone? No. My husband. He's the one who opened the door to you. <laughs> As a professional person, you are entitled to use the front door, you know. Yes, well, I'm not traipsing all the way round again just to satisfy you. The three of us. Are we private? Well, we are national health with a dash of Booper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Garamis! I shall return to them later. He has things to say. And words with which to say them. Damn it, Mrs. Morgan. You see before you, not a doctor. Not a doctor. You've been struck off. Not a doctor. <laughs> but quite the opposite. Well, um, good evening, non-Doctor Ballantyne. Tonight, I am a human being. Is that why you're cross? I have to tell you, Mrs. Morgan, that my foul mood here now under your roof is the fault of local estate agents. Please blame them. They lie. Did you know that? Where was I? A foul mood. Me? Oh, yes. I shouldn't waste my time being rude to these men. I should go round and be rude to Mrs. Morgan. Much more fun. Mm. You'll see. <laughs> ah. So, here I am, trying to be rude, for your sake. Can I do it, I ask myself. Have you ever had that problem? No, it comes quite naturally to me. <laughs> well, here goes. If you don't, I will hospitalise you. <laughs> May I have a small scotch, please? I don't mean to disarm you, dear, like you're trying to do to me, but, um, you've missed out a vital word. If I don't do what? This is my tragedy. I can't even be rude coherently. <laughs> if you don't rest, if your blood pressure yo-yos, for the sake of your baby, I will hospitalise you. You mean you'll break my legs? No, I don't think it'll come to that. <laughs> there. 
It's down. Let's try and keep it that way, shall we? You've never seen me like this before, have you? Like what? Tough. Oh, God, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, please say you haven't seen me like this before. Come on, sit down, dear. Um... No, no, not on the floor. <laughs> Leave the scotch. That's how we got a porridge-coloured carpet. <clears throat> I have a question for the back of your head. Uh, you had no luck with the estate agent? No. Oh, don't fuss. Oh, God, I feel the doctor creeping back into me. Uh, where's the dishcloth? But before he swamps me, this house, too big, need help to hell with business. Goodbye. <laughs> Behind the tanks. Don't be alarmed. I'm very good with the dishcloth, Errol. Come back. Uh, and now, if you can, let go of the dishcloth. Yes, right, thanks. Where was I? God alone knows, Dr. Ballant. <laughs> Gouramis. You've actually heard of them? Yes, of course. I'm a doctor. <laughs> a fish doctor. <laughs> That's peaceful fish. Such fish-like fish. How much money have you got? No, oh, I don't want to buy any. No, <laughs> to spend on a house. You're nothing if not blunt, are you? Oh, don't be so silly. He wants a house. Houses have a price. Can he afford it? That's all I'm asking. Uh, I'd like to answer that I if mean, I may. It seems a fairly business-like way of thinking about these two. Yes, but these are not business hours. They're social hours. Oh, I see. He stops wanting a house at 5.30 oh. unless he's on call. Oh, please, don't fight over me, please. How much? <laughs> If I tell you, you'll know. Well, that was roughly the idea. So I'm not saying because you'll take pity on me and start offering me discounts. Oh, huh, fat chance. <laughs> That's scotch, Dr. Valentine, not an oyster. <laughs> the rest. Of the bottle? Your rest. Daily, prostrate, don't forget. Uh, would you like another of those? Uh, no, no, thank you. No, I shall be, um, I shall be getting silly. Excuse me. <laughs> right, uh, where's the, um... Where's the, um... See, I'm getting fairly silly already. Where's the door? It's the hole with the big lump of wood over it. Right. How much? Have I drunk? Not a lot. Can you afford for a house? No. You're all about money, aren't you? That is, darling. You don't have to knock in your own house, you know. Yes, you are in. Come in first, Millie, then tell me if I'm right. <laughs> breakfast. Who for? For the dicky birds, who do you think? <laughs> I've never had breakfast in bed in my life. How oh, very kind. Oh, where's Peter? Gone. Gone where? Office. It's early in the morning. Why? Don't ask me. I'm only the skivvy round here. Oh, yes, every inch of you is downtrodden. <laughs> Millie, you make the most of me. I took it an hour, as and when it suits me. I have things to do. Millie, we've only been here four days. The place is quite clean, really. Mm. Kitchen's up to its plimsoll line in filth. <laughs> uh, how's your baby? Oh, fine. He's asking who this bully is. It's Great Auntie Genghis, dear. <laughs> I say, stick that lot to your ribs. <laughs> Two quid an hour, what a cheek. Stick to my ribs, it won't even come off the plate. <laughs> She said this was for you. Chew it well. <laughs> well, how you stood it, I'll never know. Millie, it is 8.30 in the morning. You time are old. No, it was money that changed from proper to new. <laughs> Why are you carrying that tray? Lifting's out. Shall I take it upstairs again? That's right. <laughs> Double the workload. What do you want me to do? Sling it over the banister? Don't you go make an extra work for me, my girl. Oh, God forbid that I should put you out in my own home. <laughs> <sighs> oh, done a very good job in here. We have even started. Just look at the state it's in. Fleas jumping, rats gnawing, fungus growing. <laughs> that plate's been scraped. And another thing, them fish in the parlour. Going to clean them too, hoover their gills. The noisiest <laughs> fish I've ever heard. Keep gasping at the surface for fresh air. 
What are you all dressed up for? So I'm sorry, I thought clothes were all the rage. <laughs> I cannot and will not stand for this. Well, sit then. Read the Financial Times. See how rich you are. <laughs> what do you fancy for lunch? Nice baked apple. I haven't had one for years. There's a tree laden with them at the very bottom of the garden. Now, if you go and get some, I promise I'll be good. I'll peel them very slowly, sitting down. Mm. All right. You need something to occupy your mind. I promise I'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I want a taxi. Now. Church farm, only I won't be there. Don't bandy peak rate phone calls with me. I shall be in the lane behind the church. Five minutes. <laughs> ah, um, do treat the place as if it were your own. It's spraying. How can you tell? Are you in bud? <laughs> Apples don't grow in spraying. And you don't frighten me, you know. I'm only scared of cleverer people. Did you ever think of a career in the diplomatic corps? In Tierra del Fuego? It's filthy there. You'd love it. <laughs> you get spliced to a bloke 16 years younger than you. Luck. You get a second family. Luck. And what do you want to do? Put it all at risk. Fresh about town like a wasp in a bottle. Uh, and now where are you up to? Work. Look, I'm trying to help. I'm taking the strain. And what's more? You've got no blacklead for your stove. <laughs> Kids. I now know why Arthur is deaf in one ear. How he's managed to protect the other, I have no idea. If a bolt of lightning struck Millie Poole, she would grab it with both hands, dust it, and then strangle it. <laughs> Good morning. What are you doing here? I'm running away from my own home. Oh, dear. I thought she'd be able to handle you. We have been married five days, and still you don't know me. And I will not eat fried doorbells on a quarry tile for breakfast. <laughs> Millie's got a heart of gold. Well, don't just stand there. Go and dig it out. <laughs> well, you can't stay here. You'll be under my feet all the time. Well, perhaps you'd rather I loafed around town, loitered with intent. I promise I won't interfere. I promise. Please let me stay. Well, what the hell am I saying? You work, I'll watch. I own the place. And why are you late? I'm sorry. Why are you even here? You're in league, all of you. Uh, make us all a nice cup of tea. Why is tea the answer to everything? Jane, tell me one thing. Who pays the wages round here? I do. Yes, but with whose money? The firms. Yes, but what I'm saying, dear, is has it ever occurred to you where that money comes from? The bank. <laughs> Once have I heard my name mentioned. So be it. I am off to a place where I can be both welcome and respected. Rugby club. <laughs> you need a new prop forward. One thing they do not need is a brand new fly half. Morning, Arthur. Don't speak to me. I'm not here. <laughs> What's the matter? Lost your time? Uh, bank rates down again. Good <laughs> Robert, to sit and watch the men I employ working, seeing that I own the whole kit and caboodle. Come inside. I want to do it outside. Is that still all right, seeing that it's mine? Where? Dead centre. Do we have a chair yet? Yeah. Brought one special from home. Just as I thought, the only chair in the world with clean rust on it. She's been at you then, has she? Millie? Slung you out? No. No, I just thought I'd leave her to get on with it in her own terrifying little way. I'll speak to her. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Mind you. You won't recognize the place when she's done with it. I don't even expect it to be there when I get home. It'll all be in my vacuum cleaner. Yeah. 
I know what you mean. Millie with a duster in her hands like a bloke with a new car. Killer. At the same time, I really don't want her overdoing it. Millie won't die. She'll just turn into a pillar of salt and fall on the rest of us. <laughs> Give us a shout if you want anything. You've got the lungs for it. Arthur. Who's the new boy? You've got eyes like a hawk. No, it's just that one shovel is working faster than the rest. Whoever's on the end of it must be you. Took him on this morning. Week's trial. And if he's found guilty, you'll employ him. <laughs> Anton. <laughs> There's fault on both sides, all to do with love. She said run the business. You heard her say it. Yes, but she doesn't mean it. I go by what these tell me. And no, there is not fault on both sides. I did exactly what she told me. Yet you snuck out of the house, scared. You let Millie Poole run riot in the place, insane. And when Mrs. Morgan got here, you told her to go away again. Brave. <coughs> Carrington and daughter, good morning. Oh, hello, Mr. Green. No, I'm afraid she's not. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but we don't know where she is. But Peter's here. <laughs> I'm sorry, where was I? Wondering why Ken Green wouldn't speak to me. Peter, I've got an idea. So have I. But we're only two floors up, so I'd only break a leg. <laughs> well, are you going to say it or am I? What? Come in. Mrs. Morgan not around? No. <laughs> why don't you believe me? Here, look through the drawers, whip out the skirting board. No, I, I believe you. Right. Well... What can the firm of Carrington and Daughter do for you? It's more what I can do for them. Bump up their prices. The houses at Ascot Field. I've had many inquiries. Oh, really? Well, then it's one and a half percent and no sole agents. <laughs> yes. I wonder where Mrs. Morgan is. She's not here. Why don't you go away until we found her? Actually, I am a very busy man. No, you're not. The laziest man I've ever met. <laughs> Tony. Doctor came to see you yesterday, Ballantyne. Did he? How much can he afford? That really is privileged information, you know. Yes. Anyway, I don't suppose it's more than 45. 56, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I really ought to follow him, you know. He'll have gone after her like the basset hound that he really is. Oh. Lend me a car, Jane, just this once. Oh, sit down again. You can handle the likes of Tony Hartshorn. But you and Millie pull together make a pretty rough team. <laughs> I've been thinking about that barn in your garden. Don't be afraid to approach me. Who are you? Yarps. Oh, sorry, did you trip? Yeah. <laughs> Y-O-P-S. Anton, Tommy says... Well... What? Well, for a start, he said I wasn't to mention his name. Do you find that suspicious? No. He says I'm not asked you to leave. Boss won't like snoopers. And if you don't go peaceful, well... You're to chuck me out. Come closer. Don't be afraid, I'm unarmed. <laughs> At this very moment, Tommy is expecting me to roll up this copy of the Times and beat you over the head with it. He never said nothing about that. Uh, did he say who I was? I told you, Snooper. Oh, he's right. Tell me, what kind of an outfit is this to work for? It sounds awful. Governors are right... <laughs> Well? Well, I can't. You're a lady. But she is. Oh, it's a she, is it? Married a young bloke who works for her. Uh, and what's he like? Oh, he's all right. One of us, Tommy says. Um, what's her name? This unspeakable cradle snatcher. <laughs> Mrs. Morgan. I never. That's my name. <laughs> that sounds suspicious. Nope. Small world. <laughs> I'd like 
happened to introduce me to this Tommy. Uh, meanwhile, tell me about yourself. Where do you live? Two doors down from Arthur Poole. I cleaned his chickens out. <laughs> Is she's gone? Can I come in? I thought you'd gone too. Yes, but I'm back. Look, she's upset with me because I bossed her. It's only because I care. Millie, this isn't a prison, you know. People can come and go as they please, especially if they live here. Well, all right. But I don't want you tramping down that cheapskin rug I've just fluffed up. So what do you want us to do? Fly above it like a pair of blue bottles? Blue <laughs> bottle locks horns with me, rules the day. <laughs> wow. What's wrong with it? Now, why didn't I think of that? All that? It's because you're not clever. You lugged all this around? No. I yelled a seance and it shifted itself. <laughs> What's her favourite for dinner? Uh, I don't actually think she'd be very hungry. I'll use a cookbook, I promise. She's mad about spare ribs. We'll be in the barn. No, I haven't done it yet! <laughs> This is Mrs. Morgan, Tommy. Morning. Tommy, isn't it? Morning, Mrs. Morgan. I did look in the first aid kit for some elastoplast to stick over your mouth, but there's only three foot left. <laughs> so you're fired. Sorry, Mrs. Morgan. You're unfired. Morning, Ken. I'm not here. I can see. I've got 3,000 nappies in the booth. <laughs> Waiting for us. Where do you want them? Oh, definitely at the house as opposed to here. I'll drop them off. Oh, come and sit in the motor. I want to chat with you. I've had a good idea. Oh, all your good ideas save me money. Tell me quickly. Oh, this one won't save you much. Except possibly your marriage and your sanity. Little things like that. You can thank Angie for it. Thank you, Angela. Turn that bloody great barn at the house into an office. Why? What's with the question? Just do what I tell you. Well, of course I will, but it would be nice to know why. Oh, little Pete. <laughs> Running the business. <laughs> Angie said that's fine. But after three months, you'll be climbing the walls. Oh, she's wrong. Three days. Oh, well, if that barn was an office, you could lean out your bedroom window, shout advice or abuse at him. You'd feel you were driving, but... So would he. Peace in our time. <laughs> Who's that? Part Sean Jr. Parking next to me. Mrs. Morgan, how well you look. How did the plastic surgery go? Sorry. I thought you'd have that smile made into a permanent fixture. <laughs> how much do you want? Trifling 2%. Isn't he the living proof that wit isn't genetic? His father's very unfunny. Uh, did you try me at the office? Yes, and Peter was muttering something silly about one and a half. Peter's greatest fault is his generosity. And I'd have made more money turning this field into a car park. I wondered. Well, this could catch on, you know. Roofless, wallless offices. Morning, Tony. Morning, Ken. Huh. I've learned such a lot from Helen, you know. Such as how to ask questions that I know the answer to already. So, do I have green monkey disease? Not to look at. Do I have a voice? Yes, dear. Do I have a brain behind the voice? Just above it. <laughs> do I have ears? Big ones. <laughs> all right, all right, gather round, gather round. I have ears, brains, a voice, and a clean bill of health. Why wouldn't you talk to me? Let's talk. What about? Whatever it was, you decided to talk to her about rather than me. Oh, thank you, Anton. <laughs> I'm still trying to shut her off. I've been trying, honest. Embrace yourself. You may fail. Peter's had a very good idea, Mrs. Morgan. The barn at Church Farm. Offices. Yes. Then you can interfere, rest, give birth, sleep, scream, and all at a moment's notice. What a good idea, Jane. Peter. Isn't it, Ken? Brilliant. Then why didn't you think of it? <laughs> now, the rest of you, leave her alone. Go on, shove off!
she's a snooper. Name's Mrs. Morgan. But she's quite nice when you get to know her. Come on, Sal. <laughs> Millie has been busy. What's that cooking? Millie. Then we'd better take her out. She'll be done by now. <laughs> oh, Millie. She does try, but she'll never actually pose a threat to Mrs. Beaton. Oh, have we got a garden of remembrance where we can scatter the ashes? <laughs> mm. They look. It must be a trick of the light. Tasty. God. Listen to this. Dear p &H, sorry about this morning. It's only love. See you tomorrow, nine-ish, question mark. Well, am I going to tell her or will you? Tell her what? That you can't go around writing notes like this. Oh. Get mascara on that and she'll kill you. <laughs> I'll make a phone call to cancel the question mark. Shall we eat in the garden? There he is. Yes? Uh, do join us in flower. Bleep, bleep, bleep it went. Dived into a phone box. Urgent call. Here, yeah, what's cooking? Relax, dear. I'm all about money. Oh, you'll hold that remark against me for the rest of my life. Ask anyone. I mean... You're about to fight. I'll wait until he can't. Have a spare rib. I've plenty of my own. <laughs> <laughs> Anatomical joke. Fine. What are these? Keys. Good. To my flat. Give them to Mrs. Ballantyne, see if she likes it. Not at 62,000 she won't. 56. Now look, I said last All night. right, if you're going to haggle, 55. I had it valued by Tony Archer. Well, no, you didn't. I asked him. You said yourself they were liars. Am I one too? Yes. If I say he valued it, then he valued it. Oh, please take them. My arm's aching. I have a gift for you. I've been pumping oxygen into them since lunchtime. Have we eaten? This is the last. One each. No fighting over which one is whose. They kiss? Passionately. Each other? No, you dark bitch. They leap out and kiss the cat. Can you put these in a tank of water before they keel over? I've never treated a garami for cardiac arrest before. Don't kick me, mate. It's not my fault your daddy's fishy. He moved. Peter, he moved. Who moved? Our friend. He kicked me. Well, you can see his point of view. 